Hey, that's a really smooth shave you got there. Gee, thanks. I use Edge Pro Gel. Hey, guys, could we? Nine, nine, Edge has nine different formulas. Really? <laughs> wow, your face is so soft. That's Edge for sensitive skin. Next time, use your own can of Edge. That was my can. What's well, not? Locker room's that way for a can of Edge. Boy, I could use a more shave. Everyone's skin is different, so Edge Pro Gel comes in nine different formulas to meet your individual shaving needs. Edge, save your skin. Yeah! This NFL Films production is a presentation of the National Football League. NFL Team Highlight Films are brought to you by Edge Pro Gel. Save your skin. Hub, have you ever come into a regular season knowing less about a football team? I mean, this is really hard to figure out, this Bears team. They are very hard to figure out, Gary, but I think it's, it's as much because expectations are so high. The question is, how far will the kids have come in one year? We know what the veteran guys are going to do. All the kids playing, how far can they come, how quickly? In their 81-year history, the fortunes of few Bear teams have been harder to predict. A host of new faces and untested talent baffled critics and crystal balls alike. Only in looking back is it easy to see what an age-old tale they told. Fans watched like woeful parents as their bears stumbled through the first half of the season with a penchant for turnovers and only one win to their name. But neither a blitz by the injury bug nor a bout with the blues was enough to break the Bears' spirits for good. We came here for a purpose, that's to go home with a win. Led by a no-nonsense rookie linebacker, the defense lit a spark that spread through the team like wildfire. And though the playoffs were out of reach, these Bears still battled and became the upset specialists of the NFL. I can't tell you how much I think of the whole bunch of you for playing it from end to end as hard as you could play it. Though they weren't in the hunt for the ring in 2000, it was the spirit of Hallis and the legends of the Midway that came to life in this young pack of bears. An old school attitude a pride in playing for the guys next to you. It's the story of one team's journey back to the roots that will guide them to new heights in the future. As the city of Broad Shoulders was being swept by the first hints of autumn, all eyes turned anxiously to the north as the Bears opened the 2000 season on enemy turf. The Bears were quick to answer an early Viking field goal as Cade McNown found room to roam and time to throw. Look, scrambles out. He is going to throw on the run, wide open, all right, touchdown Bears! He juggled it for a moment, he got it, and the Bears have taken a 6-3 lead. The snap goes back with two. Here is McNown stepping up, throwing up the field, up the middle, cut oh, by Marcus man. Robinson at the 15, 10, 5, touchdown Bears! Up 20 to 9 in the third quarter, the game turned toward an old school black and blue division battle. When it seemed Randy Moss and Chris Carter were rendered non factors by Jerry Azuma and a blanketing Bears secondary. Big, big play, third and goal for the four yard line. Cole Pepper, he's going to run. But while double coverage shut down the pass, it opened lanes for quarterback Dante Culpepper to run for three touchdowns, putting the Bears in the hole. McNown answered with some fleet footing of his own, 
but even this winding seven-yard score left the Bears three points short and proved to be more of a bad omen of things to come. Second down, 10 now. McDowell back to throw, and he throws it. It's intercepted by Abraham again. While turnovers keyed a 41 to nothing loss to the Bucks in week two, they were compounded by a stifled ground game that continued in the weeks to come. Add in what seemed to be a tough time working out the early season kinks, and you get the Bears O for September. In dire need of some inspiration, the squad headed to Lambeau in week five on their annual journey back in time. And in the 160th meeting between the oldest rivals in the NFL, the spirit of the midway came to life from the get-go. This will be the first snap of the game. Back to throw as far on first down, sets up, throws over the middle, the ball is intercepted! Picked up by Tony Parrish at the 40, the 35. Tony Parrish has far tried to thread the needle up the middle. The interception put the Bears in range, and the offense woke from hibernation. Keeper by Kane McDowell, he's in, touchdown. Looked like he was going to run the option. Two fumble recoveries by Chicago added to a much-needed turnaround in the turnover war and set the stage as the Bears unloaded through the air. Down with a deep throw, to throw, steps up in the pocket, runs out of the down, now sets and throws, throws up the field, the ball is going to be up for grabs, a jump ball caught by Marcus Robinson, he's on his feet, he's going to go in, touchdown Bears, what a remarkable jump ball that was. A few drives later, a key scramble by McNown from the Bears' one-yard line skirted potential disaster and opened the door for a little deja vu. Second down, eight yards to go, Kate back. What's coming? Gets it off. Wide receiver. Good three. God. Complete to Marcus Robinson. He's going to go. Far side. And Marcus Robinson with another huge play. 68 yards earlier. This will be 58 yards. And that's a big play, huh? Robinson's two catches for two touchdowns put the Bears up. And as night fell on Green Bay, Captain Comeback's dreams were crushed with one bubble-bursting hit. This could be the game right here. Back to throws, Brett Favre. Back to the so yes. yes. The ball comes out, and that'll do it. While it was the Bears' first win, Coach Dick Geron made history, becoming the only Bear coach to win his first two bouts at Lambeau. And there's no doubt he gave a here's to you, Marcus Robinson who despite missing five games to injury, remained one of the most exciting receivers in the NFL. Number 88 led the Bears for the second straight year in receiving yards and touchdowns, and continued to prove he's just as ready to battle over the middle as run down the deep ball. Though only in his fourth season, Robinson also served as a handy mentor for young guns Marty Booker, Kasim Cincino, Dwayne Bates, and rookie Des White, number 80, who showed their stuff in 2000 as well. White 10-5, touchdown Bears! One of the kids just made a play. Along with the return of veteran Bobby Ingram from injury, the Bears' air attack will be ready for anything in 2001. And a snap back to Katie. Robinson picks it up, scrambles up to the field. He throws deep near side. Robinson and dives out now. Touchdown, Marcus Robinson. It seems no one's more ready than this rough and tumble pack of pass catchers to knuckle up for the fight back to the playoffs. Possibly nothing conveys the old school bear spirit like the tradition of bruising middle linebackers. A tradition that was reborn with the 2000 NFL Draft. With the ninth choice in the NFL Draft 2000, the Chicago Bears select Brian Erlacher. Brian Erlacher, who has just been nothing but sensational. Like Butkus and Singletary before him, Brian Erlacher epitomizes the come-as-you-are school of football. Though he'd never played middle linebacker exclusively before, his rare mixture of power and recovery speed made him a natural. Erlacher shattered Chicago's rookie record for tackles with 165. He led the team in sacks, 
became the first Bear in 10 years to be named the league's Defensive Rookie of the Year and even received his first ticket to the Pro Bowl. But kudos take a back seat to the role he plays in defensive coordinator Greg Blosch's revitalized unit. It was a challenging task with seven of 11 starting spots featuring new faces. But by the end of the season, look out. Starting on the defensive line, Bear Vets Brian Robinson, Mike Wells, and Jim Flanagan were joined by free agent Philip Daniels, number 93. Along with reserves Clyde Simmons and Van Tuenay, the front wall was nothing short of the long arm of the law. Linebackers Warwick Holden, Roosevelt Colvin, Sean Harris, and Barry Minter personified versatility. Able to storm the backfield or slip back like cats against the pass. Though the secondary took care of most of that. Free agent Thomas Smith joined veteran Walt Harris at cornerback to the dismay of some of the league's top pass catchers. Oh, come on! Come on. And safety Tony Parrish was again just as ready to clean an opponent's clock as snatch a straight pass. Yes, intercepted yes. by Tony Parrish! But the surprise of the year may have been second round pick free safety Mike Brown, who joined Erlacher on the all rookie team with over 100 tackles and a Johnny on the spot quality that can't be taught. It was the growth of this defense that sparked the Bears' resurgence over the second half of the season, starting with a drama even Hollywood would have appreciated. While the draw may have been the high-powered Colts' offense, they were upstaged by a show-stopping Bears defense that held Peyton and the Ponies to just 69 total yards in the first half. Even two first downs came at a high price, as it seemed a new Bears defense had arrived. <laughs> Meanwhile, a little improvisation on the other side of the ball had the Colts looking more like the Keystone Cops. Oh my word, I can't believe what I just saw. It was defensive tackle Mike Wells' first career reception thanks to some sturdy pocket presence by Louis Aguiar and a pass that would have made Sid Luckman proud. And there's gonna be a handoff, the handoff here. Enos is back in, five, he's fighting! Yes! Down, Curtis Enos dragged him in! Led by quarterback Jim Miller, the Bears scored on their first two possessions, and the show was just starting. Miller wants to hit Marcus Robinson, near side ball, up, touchdown! Surveys the other side. Throws in the second. Picked up. It's going to be taken for a touchdown. Walt Harris. And he waltzes in. Untouched. But just when Chicago seemed ready to run away with the win, the Colts provided a lesson the defense will never forget as they roared back and cut the lead to just three in the game's waning minutes. Oh, my. With 1.36 left to go now, it's uh, it's getting a little uncomfortable here. Blosh's boys pulled together just in time. He's got a yes! big hit. Oh, 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 get out of here, yes! my boy. It's going to be the Bears' ball. It was a crash course for the defense in never letting down and served as a rallying point for a string of upsets to come. After being handed a 41 to nothing loss at Tampa in week two, the Bears defense was wide-eyed and ready when the Bucks strolled into town, expecting another easy win on their way to the playoffs. The name of the game was payback, starting with one key turnover. Over the middle, it's oh, no! picked up by Tony Perry to the 20. And one all-American block by Brian Urlacher. Bucks tied the game at 10 in the fourth quarter, but one more turnover set up the only other score the Bears would need. I'd be surprised if this doesn't have five or seven yards to spare. And he's got it underway. It's long it up. It's good. Good call, Bob. I'll tell you, Paul Edinger has really settled this kicking situation. And as Tampa drove in desperation, a familiar name put out the lights. Up the middle of the field. Oh, intercepted. It's picked up. Anyway, he's 
For the Bears, it was some sweet revenge. And while one star rookie sealed the win, they couldn't have done it without one more. Boy, I tell you, Bobby has an interesting free kick routine, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. After shuffling through four different place kickers in 1999, Chicago found an answer in sixth round pick Paul Edinger, who along with Erlacher and Brown received all rookie honors. And though his tackling style was as offbeat as his kicking stance, the Bears had enough big hitters on special teams to pick up the slack. The likes of Pat Manley, Frankie Smith, Ray McElroy, Dustin Lyman, and Kari Samuel led the charge. And even the young stars did their part in pinning opponents deep. On the flip side, Glenn Milburn once again made better field position for the Bears his specialty. Last season, he set an all-time Chicago mark for kickoff return yardage, passing Dennis Gentry in the record book. And while the special team's fireworks continued to thrill, the offense also got a spark late in the season when quarterback coach John Shoup took over as coordinator. The impact of the switch was felt in his first game in charge, as the offense found its rhythm behind Shane Matthews, and Matthews found his way into the record book, completing a club record 15 straight passes. Matthews looking, point up the field, and it's oh. time! Touchdown by Eddie Kennison! He bobbled it for a moment, dives into the end zone! But the biggest story of the day was the rebirth of the running game behind a gritty performance by James Allen, who carried the ball almost 40 times and scored two touchdowns. 10-10 to score. Hand off to Allen, running near side. He's to the 10, he's to the 5. Touchdown for the Bears. James Allen scoring at the top of the field. Here's an end around fake. Matthews in trouble, dumps it, and a touchdown by James Allen. Boy, I tell you, it looked like Matthews is going to get dumped for a loss. He hits James Allen, and Allen now with a rushing touchdown and a touchdown catch. And he didn't forget about his cohorts in what was a return to the bruising ground attack of years past. It was thanks in part to John Shoup's turn back the clock style of offense that the run came back to life in Chicago late in the season. But it was an impulse that was always there. Led by a veteran offensive line made up of Olin Krutz, Blake Brockermeyer, James Big Cat Williams, Todd Perry, and Chris Velario, Allen piled up 1,120 yards in 2000, becoming the club's first 1,000-yard rusher since 1997. In an age of elaborate offensive schemes, it's easy to forget the importance of pounding the ball on the ground. It's the way football is supposed to be played, Big Cat Williams said. And it was this old school attitude the Bears carried down the home stretch with one upset to go. With division rival Detroit needing only a win to get to the playoffs, almost everyone considered them a lock. Though Chicago fell behind early, the defense came to life in the second quarter and tightened like a vice on the Lions' attack. And while Detroit had nowhere to hide, James Allen broke free to get the Bears in striking distance. No matter what, they're going three buzz. So on first and second down or second on schedule, I'm gonna go Pepper K 32 lead. Thanks to Shoup's scheme, Chicago grabbed the lead early in the second half. Ball up and yes! touchdown, down, Marty Booker! But when Detroit soon took it back, more decisive blows needed to be struck. Let's get a pick! The first came midway through the fourth quarter. Back to throw is Case. Case steps up, throws up. Oh, the there you go! By RW McQuarters to the 50, to the 45, the 40, 30, and he's going to yes! go! Yes! Touchdown! Chicago Bears! RW McQuarters! 
Porter picked it up, and he just went 61 yards, and the Bears lead it 19 to 17. R.W. McWhorter with a sensational play, and the Bears have stunned this crowd here in the Silverdome. Though the Lions would tie the game, they had a right to be nervous. You need to be very stingy with the ball, all right? Concentrate on, on protecting that ball. And with 39 seconds left, the play of the year came on a double corner blitz. Takes the snap, look out, pressured, dodging, scrambling, running left, set, oh, there's a fumble! Loose ball, loose ball! And the Bears now have a chance. From there, yeah. one clutch pass put the Bears in range for the final blow. All right, here we go. This would be a kick of 54 yards. It would surpass his career long of 50 earlier today. Out of the hold of Aguiar, this is for the win. Seven seconds left. The snap, the kick by Edinger's on the way. He's got enough leg, and the kick is yeah! good! Yes! Yes! He's got it with two seconds to go. Edinger has won this game. There's two seconds left, and Edinger three for three today in field goals. Well, for any of those Detroit fans who remember Wayne Fon smoking a big cigar to get Chicago out of the playoffs, right back at you, buddy. Christmas, no Christmas, baby. Merry Christmas. Listen up, man, now real quick. We said we'd come in here with a spent tank. I don't think there's a guy got anything left. Played together the whole year in spite of a lot of <coughs> circumstances that weren't the best. I can't tell you how, how much I think of you, how much I think of the whole bunch of you for playing it from end to end as hard as you could play it. Beneath Coach Dick Geron's super calm demeanor lies a man with a mission. With the help of Vice President of Player Personnel Mark Hatley, the oldest franchise in football is ready for a renaissance. In glory, you see what a team is capable of. But through hard times, you see what a team is made of. And in 2000, the Bears showed a heart and soul as tough as the city of Chicago itself. Call it a first step back to the top, laying the foundation on which all good teams are built. Family on three. One, two, three. Family! And even as the next generation of Bears steps to the forefront, fans can also look ahead to the completion of a project that started with Papa Bear himself. Hallis's goal of a permanent home for the Bears will become a reality in 2003, thanks to the tireless efforts of team president Ted Phillips. The new stadium at Soldier Field will be a field of dreams for the Bears of tomorrow. Dreams that are already taking shape today. Built on a passion for the game and an old school attitude. Edge Pro Gel presents the Chicago Bears ultimate performance of 2000. In week 17, the Bears served up one of the year's most exciting games when they stunned division rival Detroit. Brian Urlacher led the defense with nine tackles. R.W. McWhorters had a hand in two key turnovers. And kicker Paul Leninger launched two field goals over 50 yards, including the game winner with only seconds on the clock. Edge Pro Gel is the official shave gel of the NFL. Save your skin. This NFL Films production has been brought to you by the National Football League. The NFL is online at www.nfl.com.